You've heard the hype. You've seen the sleek designs gliding down the highway. By late 2024, the electric revolution felt unstoppable. Machines like the Ionic 6, the Model Y, and the Lucid Air weren't just cars. They were engineering marvels, outclassing their gas-guzzling ancestors in speed, silence, and style. You might think the world was ready to switch. You might believe the only thing stopping us was the price or the range. But you'd be wrong. The revolution hit a wall. Not a wall of technology. Not a wall of desire. It was a wall made of plastic cards that wouldn't swipe and apps that wouldn't load. It was the frustration of a heavy, copper-laden cable that just wouldn't fit. Imagine driving into the future, only to be stopped by a plug. For over a decade, the industry committed a deadly sin. While gas cars enjoyed a century of simple nozzles and universal pumps, you, the EV driver, were thrown into a wild west, a chaotic frontier of competing plugs and proprietary grudges. You weren't just driving, you were gambling on infrastructure. They call it charging anxiety and it became a fear sharper than running out of power. It was the fear of finding a plug, but not being allowed to use it. But before we dive into how the industry fixed this mess, make sure you're plugged into the right source. Hit that like button and subscribe to Dravexa. We don't just cover cars, we cover the shifts that change how you drive. Now, let's look at the pivot. The year is 2025. The industry didn't save itself with a solid-state battery or a massive government check. It saved itself with something quieter. Something simpler. Universal interoperability. A boring name for a thrilling change. To understand the cure, you have to feel the sickness. You have to step back into the fragmented landscape of the last decade. Imagine if every smartphone brand required a different outlet in your wall. Imagine carrying an adapter just to charge your phone at a friend's house. That sounds like madness, doesn't it? Yet that was your reality on the road. First, there was Chatamo, the fading relic of the early Japanese giants. Then came CCS, the clumsy standard pushed by the West. Robust, sure, but heavy in the hand and prone to failure. And then there was Tesla, a sleek proprietary club with a lightweight connector and a network that actually worked. But here was the catch. The walls were high. If you drove a Ford, the Tesla gates were locked. If you drove a Nissan, you were left hunting for a CCS station that might not even be online. But the hardware was only half the battle. The true nightmare was the digital trap. You didn't just need a car key, you needed a digital keychain. To cross the country in 2023 without a Tesla, you might need four, maybe six different apps on your phone. Electrify America, ChargePoint, Shell Recharge, the list goes on. Each one demanding a new account, a new credit card entry, a new password to forget. And the result? Failure. Studies showed that nearly one in five public charging attempts ended in defeat. Not because the grid was down, not because the car was broken, but because the digital handshake failed. The payment wouldn't process, the signal wouldn't cross. For the tech enthusiasts, this was a puzzle to solve. But for you, for the person who just wants to get to work on time, it was a deal breaker. This friction created a chasm, a gap that tech couldn't bridge alone. But the bridge is finally being built. We are entering the era of standardization, and it changes everything. If you want to see where this road leads, keep your eyes on Dravexa. Subscribe now, and let's drive into the future together. First Ford, then GM, Rivian, and Volvo. One by one, the giants fell in line. They abandoned the clunky CCS plug and embraced the enemy. They adopted Tesla's port, the North American charging standard, the NACS. You might think this was just a business deal. You might think Tesla just muscled their way to the top, but look closer. 
NACS didn't win because of market cap. It won because of design. It won because when you hold a CCS plug, you feel the weight of a mistake. It's bulky. It's complex. It separates the power. But the NACS, it's sleek. It's half the size. It uses the same pins for your home and for the highway. It stripped away the fat and left only the function. For the elderly driver, for you, it stopped being a wrestling match and started being a connection. And suddenly, the gates opened. By adopting this port, automakers didn't just change a shape, they unlocked a kingdom. Overnight, they gave you access to 15,000 superchargers. They solved the infrastructure crisis without digging a single hole. The us versus them mentality? Gone. The tribes are dissolving. Whether you're in a Hyundai or a Tesla, you pull up to the same spot, you use the same cable, you plug into the same future. But before we reveal the hidden magic that makes this system actually work, make sure you're connected to the right signal. Smash that subscribe button for Dravexa. We don't just track the trends, we dissect the revolution. Now look past the plug, look at the code. While the hardware grabs the headlines, the software saves the soul of the experience. This is the domain of ISO 15118, a boring name for a miraculous feature, plug and charge. Think about the old way. You stop, you swipe, you enter a zip code, you wait, you pray the reader works. Now, imagine the new way. You plug in, you walk away. That's it. No apps to fumble with, no cards to swipe, no screens to tap. How? Because your car has learned to speak. Under the hood, a digital conversation is happening. It's called the handshake. The moment that connector touches your car, a cryptographic ID shoots through the line. Your car tells the charger who it is. It tells the charger what it needs. And most importantly, the car becomes the credit card. This is the power of the public key infrastructure, a web of trust between the maker and the grid. It allows for bi-directional data, a two-way street where your car negotiates the power and the price in real time. The friction of the broken card reader? Vaporized. The frustration of the buggy app? Deleted. In 2025, this standard is finally sweeping across the networks. Electrify America, EVgo, all catching up to the seamless dream Tesla built years ago. The payment failure is dying. The smooth ride is beginning. But standardization is more than just convenience. It's the foundation of something much bigger. Something that changes how we value energy itself. Stick with Dravexa because you won't want to miss what comes next. The destination is paradise, but the road to get there? It's under construction. You might think the hard part is over. You might think the handshake is done and the war is won. But if you're driving an EV between now and 2026, you aren't living in the future yet. You're living in the messy middle, a chaotic gap between what was and what will be. First you have the adapter gap. Millions of you are sitting in Mustang Mach-E's and Volkswagen ID.4's. You can see the Tesla superchargers, you can drive past them, but you can't touch them. You need the bridge, the adapter. And right now, that bridge is missing. Supply chains have choked. The official units are rare as gold dust. So you check online, you see a third party option. It looks the same, it claims to work. You might be tempted to click buy. Don't. That isn't just a piece of plastic, it's a conduit for 500 amps of raw power. A cheap knockoff can't handle the heat. It's not a bargain, it's a fire hazard waiting to melt your port. The industry is screaming one message. If it isn't certified, don't plug it in. Then there's the geometry problem. Tesla built their network for Teslas. Rear left port, back in, plug in, 
done. But you are in an F-150 Lightning. Your port is on the front. You pull up and the cable is tight. It pulls. It strains. It's physically too short. So what do you do? You park diagonally. You take up two spots to charge one car. You aren't just charging, you're starting a conflict. We're seeing charging rage spill out onto the pavement. Tesla's V4 chargers with longer cables are coming, but until they arrive, the parking lot is a battlefield. And for the true speed freaks, there's the voltage trap. You bought the cutting edge, an Ionic 5, a Taycan. You paid for 800 volt architecture, blazing fast charging, but most superchargers are still 400 volt systems. You plug in expecting a sprint and you get a crawl. Your car has to step down the voltage. You're sipping power through a straw when you should be drinking from a fire hose. It's a messy, frustrating time, but you don't have to navigate the chaos alone. This is why you subscribe to Dravexa. We spot the bottlenecks before you get stuck in them. Hit that like button if you want to stay charged and stay safe. Now zoom out. Why go through all this pain? Why is this messy middle worth the headache? Because this is how we cross the chasm. There are the visionaries, people who buy EVs to save the planet or own the tech. They tolerate the bugs. They forgive the flaws. That's probably you. But the industry can't survive on visionaries alone. It needs the pragmatists. The people who don't care about the mission, they just want to get to work. The pragmatist demands reliability, and the fragmented, broken landscape was scaring them away. Standardization is the cure. It removes the fear. Think about the economics. Before this shift, networks were gambling. They burned millions installing Shadamo plugs that gathered dust, stranded assets, wasted cash. But now, every dollar spent on an NACS charger serves every car on the road. Utilization spikes, profits rise. And when profits rise, more chargers get built. It's a virtuous cycle. We've seen the data from Norway. We've seen it in the Netherlands. When the chargers work, the cars sell. By importing that Tesla reliability to the rest of the market, we aren't just changing plugs. We are stabilizing resale values. We are reigniting demand. We are taking the electric car from a niche curiosity to a global dominator. The plug was the problem. The plug is the solution. And you are in the driver's seat for the biggest shift in automotive history. Keep your eyes on the road and keep your browser locked on Dravexa. The future is electric and we're just getting started. The revolution isn't just about where you plug in, it's about what you're plugging in to. You've survived the adapter gap. You've mastered the app trap. Now let's look at the engine room. The NACS plug was the handshake, but the next simple change, that's the heartbeat. First, we have the new standard for the tank. For a hundred years, you didn't think about regular unleaded. You just pumped it. It was cheap. It was everywhere. It worked. In the electric world, that regular unleaded has a name, LFP, lithium iron phosphate. Forget the exotic nickel. Forget the expensive cobalt. LFP is the workhorse. It's the battery that doesn't complain. It's cheaper to build, it's safer in a crash, and it lasts longer than the car itself. Sure, you might lose a few miles of range, you might not win the drag race, but for your daily commute, for the Ford low-cost runner or the Tesla Model 3 RWD, it's perfect. By embracing LFP, the industry isn't just cutting costs, they are cutting the cord to volatile markets. They are making the electric car boringly reliable, and that is exactly what you want. But the biggest trick, that's hidden in the wire. With ISO 155118, the line goes dead silent, but the data is screaming. The communication channel is finally open. Your car isn't just taking power, it's talking back. 
we call it V2G, bi-directional charging. In the near future, your car won't just sit in the driveway costing you money, it will be working for you, selling power back to the grid when the prices peak, earning its keep while you sleep. Suddenly, the EV isn't a liability, it's an asset. It's a power plant on wheels. And for the skeptics, that's a language they understand, cash. The simple change isn't sexy. A unified plug doesn't make your heart race like a two-second zero to 60. A payment protocol doesn't look cool on a magazine cover. But boring is the victory condition. To kill the gas engine, the electric car can't just be better. It has to be easier. It has to be as thoughtless as flipping a switch, as simple as toasting bread. The NACS plug, the plug and charge magic, they strip away the novelty. They erase the confusion. They turn a piece of high-tech wizardry into a simple utility. Right now, we're standing in the messy doorway. The next 18 months, they'll be loud, confused, full of adapters and short cables. But look past the noise. Look to 2027. Imagine a world where a Ford driver pulls into a Tesla station. They plug in, they walk away to buy a coffee. They don't check an app, they don't swipe a card, they don't even look back at the car. That silence, that absence of frustration, that is the sound of winning. If you want to hear more of that truth, you know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to Drivexa. Drive safe and drive smart.